It's the gear tester here, and in this video, I'm going to be comparing and contrasting two very similar knives. They do have some minor, very subtle differences, and I think that those are important enough differences that I'm doing this video for you, my viewers, and subscribers. Both these knives are manufactured by Knives of Alaska. Both of them are made out of the quality D2 steel which Knives of Alaska uses, and both of them are labeled as hunting knives or boar hunting knives. So these knives are predominantly intended to be used as a primary hunting tool. If you are hunting pigs or wild boar with dogs, okay? Right here on the bottom, you have the boar hunter from Knives of Alaska. And here on the top, a slightly larger knife, slightly longer knife is the Magnum boar hunter knife. The Knives of Alaska Boar Hunter has an overall length of 10.25 inches. It has a 5.5 inch blade and it weighs in at 5.7 ounces. That's, that's pretty light. Uh, the Extreme Magnum Boar Hunter, which is part of Knives of Alaska's uh, Magnum Country series, has an overall length of 11.375 inches. It has a 6 inch blade and it weighs in at 6.9 ounces. So if we look at the differences of these two knives, we were just going to compare and contrast them in terms of size and weight and, and the length of their blades, we would see that the Magnum Boar Hunter knife weighs in at an ounce heavier it has half an inch longer blade, in essence a little bit more than half an inch longer handle, and uh, is very similar. Okay. However, when I compare and contrast these two knives, I find myself liking, if I was just going to pick to one of these knives to own, one of these knives to have, if I was just going to take one of these knives out with me, for instance, if I was going boar hunting, or I was going on a backpacking trip or something like that, I would be taking the Extreme Magnum Boar Hunter with me, okay? And a lot of that has to do less with the blades than it does with the handles. So I'm just going to show you the blades here. I'm going to lay them side by side and then allow you to compare and contrast. The reality is that although the uh, Extreme Magnum Boar Hunter has half an inch longer blade, the actual cutting edge of the blade, all right, is actually very very minimal, the difference there. They're, they're very similar. You're, getting, you're not getting really half an inch longer cutting blade when you get the Extreme Magnum Boar Hunter. So in terms of the length of the blade, the blades seem to be identical to me in terms of thickness. Okay. So in terms of their overall dimensions, they seem very similar to me. And uh, if we look at the spine of the blade here, you will see that there are some subtle differences in the jimping. Okay, but those are really minor differences. Uh, I, I don't think that you gain a whole lot or you lose a whole lot in, in comparing these two knives in terms of their blades. Okay, but the handles actually matter quite a bit to me if we were going to look at these. I like the half an inch plus of a longer grip that you get with the Extreme Magnum Boar Hunter. Okay, I like how it feels in my hand better. If you uh, look here, at the handle on the boar hunter, which is here in my left hand, it's a little bit shorter grip and it's kind of short and fat and stout and that might fit your hand very well. It might not, I mean, it fits my hand very well, but I just feel mm, like there is less for me to grab onto than with the Extreme Magnum boar hunter's handle. I, I just like it better. I I'm just able to get more of my hand on it. I feel like if I was wearing gloves or I got a uh, blood or water or muck and mud on my hands that I feel like the additional length here in the handle on the Extreme Magnum Boar Hunter is really beneficial and important. Now you could put your thumb over the top there and still stab or thrust and you've got this nice guard there that's not going to allow your hand to go forward on the blade and that is a very good thing because these blades are razor sharp. Okay, Razor, razor sharp. Um, but the, the handle on the Boar Hunter, to me, is, is less desirable. I also like uh, the handle on the Extreme Magnum Boar Hunter because it gives you a lanyard hole. 
probably wouldn't use that, but it gives you the option of that, and I like that. I, I think that that's better. That's also creating a third point of uh, contact or a third point which holds this uh, sure grip handle onto the knife. So, I, I really, that for me, the difference in comparing the two knives overall, the handle on the Extreme Magnum Boar Hunter and the slightly longer blade, those things uh, cause me to like the Extreme Magnum Boar Hunter better. I just want to give you a look at the sheaths for these knives. Uh, this is the sheath for the uh, Boar Hunter, the standard Boar Hunter. Okay, and uh, here is the sheath for the Extreme Magnum Boar Hunter. Both manufactured out of leather. It's uh, made in the United States, or at least the sheath says made in the United States. I assume that the leather is an American product as well. Could be wrong there. Um, and so they're, in, in terms of comparing the knives in the sheaths, and the way they're going to ride on your belt and operate for you, I think uh, in, in that situation, uh, there might be a, a cause to potentially prefer the Boar Hunter over the Extreme Magnum Boar Hunter. You can see the sheath is a little bit longer, and uh, because they have included a, a, a leg tie down for the Extreme Magnum Boar Hunter, you can see there that it is it is a little bit longer. So if you're wanting to keep uh, the maximum amount of your gear and equipment high on your belt, and, and minimize this about, I would say, two inches, maybe a little bit more than that. Yeah, right at two inches. Okay, so the difference in the in the sheath, the actual knife in the sheath, appears to me that it's gonna be basically two inches because of the extended tie down on the Extreme Magnum 400. So you're trying to keep everything as close, as high, as tight uh, on your belt. Maybe you'd wanna go with the uh, the Boar Hunter over the Extreme Magnum Boar Hunter. Uh, let's talk about price difference on these two knives for a second. I purchased both these knives from a Midway USA a couple weeks ago. On this one, a little bit longer ago, on the Extreme Magnum Boar Hunter. And uh, this knife, the, the Boar Hunter, ran me $85, and the Extreme Magnum Boar Hunter ran me $110, $115. So we're talking basically a $25 to $30 difference. And I think if, it's, if it was my money and I was just going to have one of these knives, I think that I would go with the Extreme Magnum Boar Hunter. For that $25 to $35, I think you're getting a, a little bit larger knife blade and you're getting that larger handle, which I really like. And so I would spend my money if I was, if I was just going to buy one of these knives. If I can tell you right now, if I was going out to use one of these knives, I'd be taking the Extreme Magnum Boar Hunter with me over uh, the uh, the boar hunter. Uh, I, I think there's you know a lot of uses for these knives. How many of us are actually going to go out and uh, go stab a pig or a, a, a boar or some other wild animal with these knives? Probably not. Not many people are going to actually go out and do that. It would be very interesting. It would be extremely exciting to go and do that, uh, right? But I think most people who have knives for boar hunting probably don't end up actually using them for that. But I do think that in certain situations, these knives of Alaska knives do make sense. For instance, if you decided to go to a area or location where you could not carry a sidearm while you were hunting or backpacking or camping, so there might be locations where carrying something like this Smith & Wesson 686P 357 Magnum revolver uh, would not just would not be legal. Or it could be legal, but the amount of hassle that you have to go through. For instance, if you're going to go, uh, you're a, an American, okay, a citizen of the United States, you're wanting to go into Canada and do some hunting, you might find that it is uh, prohibitive in terms of the amount of red tape and paperwork, and maybe even illegal, uh, for you to take a pistol into Canada. And so maybe you're going up there to hunt, and you would like to have a additional weapon on your site if your rifle runs out of bullets or if you uh, for whatever reason need an, uh, to to deal with something up close and personally whether that's a uh, you know a four-legged predator or whether that's a two-legged predator you might find that a knife like this would be legal for you to carry legal for you to have um, and it would be useful it would be a lot easier to get into the location where you wanted to go hunting 
You might also be in the situation that you do not have the additional funds to purchase a five or six or seven hundred dollar handgun. Even a four or five hundred dollar handgun just may not be in your price range. And a hundred dollar knife or an eighty-five dollar knife, okay, is a lot more affordable. And so for those reasons, you might choose to pick one of these knives out for yourself. Both the Boar Hunter and the Extreme Magnum Boar Hunter from Knives of Alaska are excellent blades. And I think they are well made and I think they are very durable. I think they will last you a lifetime. And I would recommend both of them to you. My, my personal preference is it leans towards the Extreme Magnum Boar Hunter, but both are great blades. Both are made of that excellent D2 steel that Knives of Alaska use. Both of them are uh, produced in the United States. Those things make me like Knives of Alaska. If you like this video, if you found it useful, helpful, beneficial, I would encourage you to subscribe to my channel for more quality video reviews on the topics of shooting, camping, and survival gear. This is the Gear Tester signing off.